sacrifice, beloved. It is you connecting to the heart of God. Over you this year, may the Lord continually speak. As we go into your word, let your word touch us. And let there be deliverance. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Quickly, before we go back to our prayers, we want to look at our leadership teaching that we have been running. And I want us to still look at it deeply today as I speak of what I call the power of right companionship. The power, I say, the power of right company. The power of what? Of right company. The book of Mark chapter 2 from verse 1. The book of Mark chapter 2 from verse 1. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room. Even outside the door, while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him in to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are what? Are for given. Then we look at verse what? Verse 10. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority to on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed. And praise God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like what? Like this before. I'm praying for somebody here. The Lord will put you and help you the grace to be among the right company of people. No man is an island. Like I've said to people, there's something called the power of relationship. This looking at this word, I pity those who who go to church for comfort. There are some people that the church they attend must meet up their status. But here was a man that was not bothered, that had a company of friends that was not bothered whether the place was crowded, whether the place was filled up. All they wanted was that their friend should what? Should be healed. There are people in your life that if the Lord permits you to meet them, you need to keep them. And there are people in your life that when the devil programmed them into your life, you need to do what? Do away with them. If you look at the response of Jesus to this man, he was guilty in one way. The first thing that Jesus addressed was his what? Was his sinful life. The next thing that Jesus confronted were the people who were around him that were saying that how come Jesus has the power to forgive sin? And the third thing that Jesus did was to tell him that he's made old and he began to walk. If you look at this particular scripture now, you will see that it's not about the miracle alone. It was not about the encounter. But it's about the doggedness of his friends. It's about 
the kind of company of people that this man, although he was a sinner, but he had friends that understood the power of salvation, the power of healing, and he had friends that could do anything for him. There was a man in the Bible who was so likely in the same position. And the Bible says this man would be by the pool expecting that the angels would come and steer the waters. And the reason why he kept on coming every year and he was not having anything as his own testimony is because he did not have anyone to just push him into the water. Nobody could be there. Nobody could sacrifice a day for him. Nobody could be there to just say, okay, when is it that... uh, that time when the angels come and trouble the water, when Jesus saw him, he said, uh, what, what, what is happening to you? He said, sir, I have nobody to help me. And here was a man that had four good friends, one that could carry him on the left-hand side, another one that could carry him on the right-hand side, another one that could carry his leg on the left-hand side, Another one that could carry his leg on the right hand side. I'm praying this prayer for you. May the Lord send right people around you. Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear a powerful amen? The testimony of this man did not just come up after he was healed. His testimony started from the fact that he had the right set of people around him. The testimony of this man is that the almighty God in his infinite mercy would not have been able to reach out to him if not that he had friends that were ready to do what? To go beyond every form of obstacle to lift him up. The testimony of this man is not that, oh, he's now walking. Is that he had friends that were ready to break another man's house just for him. To be healed. The testimony of this man is not just that he is healed now, is that he had friends that are ready to drop money to do what? To repair the house that they just destroyed. The testimony of this man is not that, no, I was once sick, but now I am healed, is that he had friends that could guide him to Christ and not guide him to the wrong place. There are people here today that one of the ways the Lord will establish your leadership grace, one of the ways that you will be a great leader in life and furnish your destiny with greatness is that you must be among the right people. If you are not in the right companion of people, beloved, you will not be able to achieve what the Lord has said you will achieve easily. Just like my daddy in the Lord will say, it will make you know there are some people in life you must meet. Why there are some people in life you must what? You must miss. The right kind of companionship. It has to do with everything around you. It has to do with whom you marry. May you never marry your enemy. It has to do with even the kind of neighbors you have. It has to do with your close friends. It has to do with those who take advice from you and those that you take advice from. I've going to read the book of Proverbs 18 verse 12 that says, He who walks with the wise shall, what? shall be wise, but the companions of fools shall be destroyed. It is the right companion that will guide you into your next level. It is the right companion that will position you where people will see you and recognize you for favor. It is the right companionship that will take you away from the circle of what I call selfish people and you will now begin to be in the midst of selfless people. It is the right companionship that will let you have an environment whereby it's not just about greedy people who are thinking of themselves alone, 
But those that are thinking of you and those who are ready to do what? To put you first while they can wait. It is the right companion, beloved, that can help you fight what the enemy has denied you of. Imagine if David did not have the right companions, men who were ready to fight until he could sit on the throne, he would have remained a loner all his life. It is a right companion that made the three Hebrews children to say, we don't care at the blast of the whistle. You don't understand what it means. If you hear this thing, every one of you, you must bow. And they said, we are not going to bow. And you know what happened is that the king put them in a place like Tafar Balewa Square, where you will see everything. And you now say, once they sound the alarm, all of you bow. And you know, in that kind of place, if you don't bow, you will remain standing. And these guys had the same mindset. They were four friends, but they had a friend in each other. You know, sometimes the reason why the temptation is pulling you down is because when one is weak, there is no other to lift it up. It's because when you are saying, I think I'm going to chicken out of this thing, there's nobody that is telling you that, well, by my revelation, God is with us in this thing. And those three Hebrew children, they were there. They did not bother. They said, well, if you like, sir, even if you like, throw us there. The fact is that we will not go into that fire we are ready to go to that fire because we cannot deny this God. That is the power of right companionship. And when they entered it, like that you was saying recently, just this past weekend, that not only the day were not born, they had the visitation of the God they were talking about. So if you are here as a believer and you don't understand the value of right companions. If you are here as a believer, the Lord has placed you in the midst of people who will tell you the truth, no matter the level of money you have, no matter how, how big you are. The, you need to plant yourself among those kind of people. Some of us, we are so tuned to those who will say, hail him, hail him, hail him. Some of us, we are so tuned to those that want to tell you what you want to hear. Some of us, we are so tuned to those people that will always give you an option outside Christ, an option outside the word of God, an option outside the way of God. Some of us, we are so happy to be among those people that will relieve you of the pressure of Christianity and say, ah, let me at least be around normal people for once. So we are the abnormal people. Some of us, you are so, you are so aligned to those people that will let you think that this way of the Lord is, is too much. We are getting too deep into it. Jesus himself came to this world. And do you know that one of the biggest formidable team that has ever passed through this earth is the team of Jesus. When he prayed, if you read your Bible carefully, the Bible made us to realize that Jesus prayed all night to choose his own team. He prayed all night to do what? To choose his own success team. Jesus could not do it alone. Jesus did not just come to this world and he just said, I can do it alone. He was the true son of God, but yet he needed a team. If you look at the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 12, he says on one of that Jesus went out on the mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated as what? As apostles. He had a formidable team. He was ready to mentor them. He was ready to build a formidable force. When you see a winning person, check his team. When you see a failing person, check the team that they are keeping. I want you to know that, beloved, it is time for you to evaluate the companionship that you are keeping. Some people don't know that the companions you are keeping is, can be a plan of God to lift you up and can also be the plan of the devil to bring you down. 
The man called Job never knew that he had wrong friends until his affliction came. These were friends that would always speak well of him. But the time his affliction came, they were men that were ready to bring him down. Some of you know that those who are gathered around you now, they are there because of what the Lord is doing in your life. And yet, some of us don't know that they are the ones that will talk you out of the way of the Lord in which they met you and your life is flourishing. In. Some people need to understand that the power of right companionship is something that you cannot buy on the shelf. It's something that you cannot buy in the market. Why is an ego like you chilling with what I call vultures? What is your ego doing with what I call chicken? What is your lion doing in the cage of cats and among wolves and foxes? What is your elephant doing around the packs of the wilds that are ready to devour and to tear about, tear you apart out of your realm of what? Being giant and being great. If you want to walk as a leader wherever God has placed you, if you want God to position you for greatness and for destiny, then you have to check the company in which you are keeping. There's a place of wisdom for everyone here. And there's a place of what I call foolishness that can be found in the heart of people here also. If you have checked, like I say to people, what is the quality of the right people that Lord has placed around you? Don't be fooled. I have seen people come to church and keep the wrong company. I have seen people come, yes, to the house of God. And yet in the house of God, because you know what they have in them too is not very pure, it's not very genuine. They attract the wrong kind of people. You attract the wrong kind of vibe inside your life. And right from the house of God, these same people begin to do the work of what? Destruction from within, around you and within you. When you have problems, like I say to people, among all your, uh, where I come from, they call it korikosu. If I don't see you, I don't sleep. How many of them can stand with you in prayer? Among all your friends, that both of you are carrying yourself together. <laughs> How many of them have gone through the test of fire? How many of them I pray for somebody here. You know, I was talking about this thing. May the Lord open your eyes. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. There's somebody that came under my mentoring. And one of the things that shook this lady is that her best friend was her best enemy. You know, when your dream comes under the control of the Holy Ghost, it became so real that it is what she's, what the person is wearing, what the person is doing, that the, the following day, the person will act it out. So if you don't, are not keeping the right company, it got to a level that this person, in, in the same, my bestie, my best, he, re, he even told the friend, come and walk in my office. Can you imagine? That, no, there's an opening here. Dragged the person there. But when the Lord whom we serve on this mountain, some of you need to pray this prayer. My father, throw your such light into my environment. Am I making that to somebody here? Just show, let your such light beam on those I call my friends. The day the such light of God beams on them, some of you, you would rather say, let me be alone. Let me, let me just be alone. But the truth is this. If you want to be a leader, in your circular world. If you want to be a leader in your spiritual work, you have to be careful of the companions you keep. If you don't keep the right company, you will find yourself to blame. If you don't keep the right company, it is not about the strength of those people. Some of us, we choose our friends by status. Some of us will choose our friends by those who can give you connection. There was no connection. When Jesus was going to pick his own friends, he picked a fisherman. He picked a tax collector. 
Oh, thank God, Brother Luke, a medical doctor, who helped in writing some of these things. When he was going to pick, he picked ordinary mommy's boys. Jesus, can you, can this my two children? He picked mommy's boys. When he was going to pick, he picked number one person that can, that can jack by when there's problem. But there was something that Jesus saw in Peter that others did not see. He said, on this rock, will I do what? Will I build my church? And the gates of what? Of hell would not prevail. Peter never saw it. But he knew that there was something in him that others didn't have. So when we are looking at you as a believer, you need to pray to have the right companions around you. Oh, this club, this thing club, that one club. All those, they are club, 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 club. I'm telling you, one of these days, you will realize that it was, this is just an arena of satanic deception. All these, we are moving in force. If you move us, we move together. If you shake one, you touch me. Let trouble start. You know that all what you are cherishing, is all what we call fake life. The day you pick the right companion, that is the place you hear the truth of the word of God. The day you pick the right companion, that is the place whereby you go in smiling, but you come out frowning. The day you pick the right companionship around you, they are the ones that take you back to the word of God. They take you back. Some of you, you are walking in a place. Everybody there. You are the only born again person. Every other person there. No one of them knows God. You say, ah, it's better. You know, all this born again now. They begin to show too much of God. Let me walk with these unbelievers. When the truth is this, when the chips are down, we will know who is on the Lord's side. And we know who is on the Lord's side. So some of you don't know that it is the company of the right people that put God first, even before you. It is the company of the right people, of the right ones that we are talking about. They are the ones that are ready to bend for you to climb on their shoulder so that you can see afar. Some people don't know that the company of these right people we are talking about, they might not look it. They might not look big. They might not look great. They might not look like everything. But one thing is that you can never deny the fact that they are very truthful and they will stand on the solid wall. I have seen people who disapprove this right company and they go about the popular opinions. The truth is this, many years down the line, they are still forced to come back to that place. As I bring this word to a close, can you say I have the right kind of people around me? Even in heaven, the Bible talks about the 24 elders. I might make it say to somebody here. Even God Almighty says, we say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. If you are here under the sound of my voice, and you know that the Holy Spirit is telling you that this circle you are keeping is not safe for you. You know, you are here, the God is telling you, that this circle that you just met or you need to exodus off is not the best for you. This circle that will take you from fire and bring you to a place of smoke is not good for you. One of the mystery of Christ is that he calls you alone. The Lord does not call so many people. He calls you alone to himself. It's after he calls you to himself that he now begins to send men to you. Jesus had a personal call before he now began to call everybody unto himself. The same way, beloved, you must first of all be close to God. Then God will begin to draw the right set of people to you. God will draw the right kind of people to you. You yourself must be ready and be willing to take whoever God is bringing your way and to accept them. I've told you that don't think because you come to church, you will find the right people in church. The day you come to the church, 
know that the church is a madhouse. There are people who have different issues in the church. Even among the church people, you still have to discern for you to know which one is of the Lord and which one is a right company. There are people who come to church and it's from the church that they now decided to start another journey onto self-destruction. The kind of company you keep determines what you attract spiritually. There are so many people that don't understand the power of what I call human energy. There are people that you get close to and what they radiate back to you, that's a teaching already, is something negative. What comes out of them is very, very bad. There are people you get close to and whenever they open their mouth to advise you, they advise you in flesh. There is no counsel of God on it. There are people that when you get close to, you just discover that good things begin to evade you. If God made Jesus to walk with those powerful 12 men, yes, one of them failed. Oh, it is normal. He fulfilled the wrong prophecies. So the fact that you are keeping the right company, say, hey, that's how I kept the company of Christian ones. One of them, one of them was the one that took my boyfriend away, that took my girlfriend away. Oh, it is normal. It is normal. That's the, that's the, that's the truth. Oh, that's how I made friends in church. If I know, my gist went outside. Oh, it is normal. That is normal. But one truth that you must know is this. And what is that giant truth? The company you keep has a lot to your next level, to do to your next level. If you are here, like I said to people, do you have people who can go on prayer and fasting for you? Do you have people who can deny themselves for you to be lifted? Do you have people who can break down, who can take you to say, no, Jesus, this person must what? Must receive help. Or all those you have are those who are just fair weather people around you. People that just cry to you, we heal you, we heal you. But they don't, they are not ready to tell you the truth about yourself. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above every other name. May the Lord give you the grace to keep the right company. Rise up on your feet. And say, Father, can I hear you say it loud and clear? Put your searchlights. I can hear you say it loud and clear. Say, put your searchlights on everyone around me. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody pray that prayer? Can somebody pray that prayer? Holy Spirit, put your searchlights on everyone around me. Can you say it loud and clear? Can you say it loud and clear? Can you say it loud and clear? In Jesus' name we pray. Close your eyes. Say, man of God, how do I choose the right company? It's for you to be close to the ears of God. Put your ears, sorry, for you to be close to the mouth of God. When God whispers to you and says, this one, keep, this one, trash. When God begins to show you things, remember we say, controlling your night. When God reveals things to you, that is how you will keep the right company and flush out the wrong people. So many people short-lived their stay in positions in secular companies because they kept the wrong set of people. So many people, their marriage scattered because they kept the wrong set of people. So many people could not get to where God wants them to be because they kept the wrong set of people. I pray for you. From today, may the Lord sift evil friends away from you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Aha. Uh -huh. 
I say it again. May the Lord sift away all those that are not meant to be in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray. May the Lord take away there's someone here. There's somebody who is telling you that you are taking Jesus too much. You know yourself. And the person is very close to you. You don't need any what? Any microscope to know. There's somebody, I was speaking to somebody, he said, man of God, he said, when I came to this MFM, not this bad he said, somebody there told me, I said, do you think everything here is just MFM prayers alone? He said, let me take you to where you can go and serve waters. Yes. And they were telling the lady when she, when she joined there too. He said, but man of God, today, this person that is serving waters said the life has gone bad. I'm talking of three, four years ago. From the church, want to take somebody from church to go and what? To go and serve the waters. I pray for you. Anyone that you will meet and will drag you down the ladder of leadership. Anyone that will take you from the place of spiritual leadership to the place of spiritual destruction. May the Lord separate you in the name of Jesus. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray for you. The power for you to choose right. May the Lord give it to you in the name of Jesus. Anyone here that among your team members, there is a sellout. There's someone who is working to bring you down. Whether where you walk or where you are heading, I pray for you. Within the next 72 hours, let God expose and disgrace them in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Say power to choose right friends. Say power to choose right companions. Say fall upon me now. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Can you pray that prayer loud and clear? To sacrifice, beloved, it is you connecting to the heart of God. Over you this year, may the Lord continually speak. Eka poli andar ribo koshetelia.